it is austere August. Today is August the 1st, and I'm going to do a shave. Welcome. I'm going to get this in the water because it's a bore brush. I'll be using this brush for the entire month of August. This is great because it only has about five or six, seven uses in it, so it's pretty young. So by the end of this month, this brush should look very different. The splay should increase. It should be a lot softer because more of the tips uh, should have split. So it will be interesting to watch that happen. So I'm just going to... I just use lukewarm water, whatever comes out of the cold tap. And this water here is pretty soft, so it's good for lathers as well. And I'm only going to soak the, the brush tip part. And the razor we're going to use is the Blackland Dart. I'm really enjoying this razor. I'm getting some of the best shaves uh, that I've, I've had with, with a dart. And um, this is, uh, it's a mid-aggressive razor, and that's probably why. Um, I do feel the blade in most cases, um, but what I end up with is an irritation-free shave that is as close as just about any that I've ever gotten with with certain blades. Uh, yesterday was the Astra Superior Platinum, and that was right up there with one of the best shaves I've ever got. Uh, because I can't go against the grain on my neck, so I have to have a high performance razor. Uh, I mean, any rate, just about any razor can go against the grain and cut you uh, nicely and cut you flush. But when you can do that with just cross grain patterns. That's a, uh, a razor that works well for you. The blade that we are going to use, this is Austere August, and so um, this razor I just showed you is the one I'll be using for the entire month of August. The blade, here's where it gets interesting. The blade is a Gillette Nasset. I'm going to try to see if I can make this blade go the entire month. This has already had two uses on it. And I'm going to go ahead and use it anyway. So 33 shaves it will have on it if I complete all the days of August. Um, uh, I've heard reports from guys online. You know, there are guys who've taken them to 110, 120 shaves on certain blades. And they attest that it's not so much a certain blade or a razor or something like that. It's just good technique. Um, you're, is your cutting angle the, the right one? And is it consistently that? Um, so... Let's just see. Let's just see what can be done. And, and some, another important concept was how, uh, how it feels. And I'll go, I'll go into that once I'm making a lather. Remind me, right? The soap is going to be a throwback. Williams Mug Shaving Soap. Uh, I'm doing this one because I want to spend August studying and becoming proficient. At this soap and those skills will probably transfer to other soaps as well but these the the new artisans that have come around the last several years see this has been on for a long time um, since 1840 and the the artisans that have produced these newer ones they've made them so easy to lather anybody can just whip up a good lather and, and that's fine that's great but, you know, our forefathers used soaps like these. And I am just uh, curious. Um, this is an inexpensive soap. I got it today for about, uh, I think, $1.60. You can easily get it uh, uh, on Amazon usually for $2 each. And uh, you can sometimes get it on eBay for less than $2 each if you buy a large enough quantity. And I've heard that this is a uh, one month supply and so one month of shaving soap for about a dollar sixty yeah i'll take that so here's the puck notice it's it is beveled and so it's not as thick as it says as it looks because it's got a bevel in, an inset on both sides and here it is um the and it's the perfect size to go in the bottom of just about any mug i mean that's why it's called what it is and for a long time you know they didn't have shaving dishes and stuff as much most guys just had a mug and uh, I've used it several times, and I've gotten great lathers. I've used the old version, which had tallow, or more tallow, um, and got a crazy slick lather that could rival any of the big-name producers. Uh, Barrister and Man, Holy Cow, Declaration Grooming, all those guys. 
um, but it just took a little bit more time. Uh, and then I tried the new version, current version, and the um, uh, I got a very similar lather, super slick. It wasn't quite as voluminous, it wasn't quite as creamy as the uh, tallow version, but it was still great. It was still very slick, very protective, uh, wonderful lather. Um, and so I wanted to, but again, the technique I used, I was using a generic technique that is kind of foolproof. And so what I want to do is hone that technique to something efficient. Some way I can, I can tell people, um, hey, this is the way to do it. It's quick and efficient and it gives you great lathers with a $1.50 soap. Um, and I think that could benefit people on a budget. Uh, and I just think, and there are a lot of people out there who really denounce this soap um, because it's because they don't have the skills to lather it properly. Um, we'll see, hopefully, through the course of this month, whether it's the skills they may have, if they increase in, in their knowledge, uh, will it get them where they want to go, or does this just take just a little more time? And if so, how much? And then we can people can know if it's worth it or not. But this is put down a lot, and I don't think it should be. I think it can compete, and that's why I'm doing this soap. For this month and uh, we'll see how much at the end of the day is left uh, maybe the whole puck will be used up um, I was so happy um, Walmart other grocery stores that I've looked uh, places like Dollar General uh, all the drug stores Walmart CVS Rite Aid no longer carry this soap I remember maybe four or five years ago Walmart had Williams mug soap not anymore, at least not the ones anywhere near me. And I actually lucked out tonight because I went to a nearby Ingalls supermarket. And it was a kind of a brand new one. And they had a nice selection of shaving gear for a grocery store. And I found, and I bought two of them. One of them I brought to show you the box. The other one earlier today, I used a cheese grater to grate it, the entire puck and uh, into a paper towel and then I just uh, funneled that into this bowl and pressed it down and there we go that's what it looks like and this is a great method for making any hard soap any hard soap that won't scoop uh, fit any container and so this is going to be a lot easier to, la uh, to load up than just putting it in a standard sized mug and so this is exactly one puck the puck I showed you that's what this is right here. This is just a little bowl that I got at, uh, this is Better Homes and Gardens. Um, and uh, this was at Walmart just a few days ago. It measures four and 0.375 inches uh, in length and width and 2.25 inches high. Just for you guys' information. All right. Um, I will try to post in the description of any of these uh, Williams videos uh, the best video that gave you the best technique because I may not stumble upon it in the first shot okay and I don't want you to have to go searching through all the videos to find the best one um, so uh, keep in uh, touch with the uh, description and I'll, I'll make it down there so this is just pressed in and after a few uses this uh, the shreds look that it has will give way to a solid look because it'll all just get wet and kind of get all together. So here's a puck of Williams. It does have a citronella scent and some you can't get around that. One thing you can do is shred it, put it on a cookie sheet, let it be there for a couple of weeks if you you know are really interested in having the scent be removed and that will let it diminish some. But for me, this reminds me, and I can't remember what soap, you know, Zest or Coast. I, I don't remember which one. I don't think it's Ivory. I don't think Ivory is quite as strong as this. But there's some soap from my youth that I, uh, that smells very similar to this. And so I don't think of Citronella when I smell it. I think of Clean and Soap. And so... Um, that's why I uh, enjoy it and I don't mind the scent at all. Also, even this scent, it's, uh, it's not very strong once you have everything lathered. At least that's how I recall. 
Okay, we've covered, oh, and uh, post-shave. So I figure since I was doing a throwback to this with the soap, I am going to do a throwback with the post-shave product as well. I got some Aft Atra, Afta. Um, and I don't really like this scent as it turns out, but uh, we're going to use it anyway. We'll see if I grow as a person, right? So Afta Fresh, it's made by Menon, three ounces, and uh, we'll just try it out. The brush has had plenty of time to soak. Um, as you may or may not know, bore brushes do absorb uh, a reasonable amount of water, and so that's why they need uh, to have water uh, for several minutes before the shave. Um, be near them. I like to soak them. Some people just like to really get water in them and rinse them really well and then set them aside to kind of absorb it slowly after that. I just like to stick them in a cup of water. All right, I'm going to get my face wet. So it's very rare for Williams to be appear in stores these days. And so I actually, that's why I bought two pucks. And later on, I, I was like, well, that's great. One I can show and one I can use. But um, I bought two just to show support for the brand. So maybe they'll keep it in stock. So whenever I'm visiting this area, I can help them. All right. Because I really like it. It's a throwback. It's a good performer, but it's also a little bit of a piece of history. Our grandfathers. I mean, this was the kind of soap that our grandfathers and great grandfathers uh, probably used um, because there weren't as many options back then. Not nearly as many options as we have now. Okay, I got my face wet, so now the hairs are starting to soften. Let's, uh, with the uh, with the Williams, we're going to do the mug method where uh, I don't do I don't scoop out. That's what I usually do with the artisan soaps. Uh, that are more soft, but Williams is different. Uh, this time, what we're one, the technique we're going to use is I'm going to use this to measure the water as we're adding it to the lather. I am going to add in a uh, quarter teaspoon of water on top of the soap, and then this has been wrung out, uh, slung out. And I'm just going to start mixing. I'm going to, oh, that was 45 right there. So I'm going to go for one minute and just, let's just see how much lather that gives us. So at the 45 second mark. Um, for you new guys, this is, uh, this stage is called loading the brush. We are taking a uh, damp or wet brush and we're rubbing it around on the soap to put the soap onto the brush. This is not building a lather. Now this is starting to feel a little dry. So I'm gonna add another quarter teaspoon. This is another reason to press it really well because you don't want that water that you added to go down into a crack and, and basically go away and be unavailable. I'm gonna do it for a couple, uh, three extra seconds since I stopped um, one, two, three. All right. Now, this looks promising. Got a minute of loading, and part of the way through, I added another quarter teaspoon of water. So, we're going to fine-tune a good lather with Williams. All right. So now we take it to the bowl. It's not really sudsing up, it's staying pretty thin. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start adding by half teaspoon amounts. That's my standard amount as I add water to soap. Um, so one of the things that uh, people talk about with Williams is they say they get big bubbly lathers that are super thin, big bubbles. You notice I'm not getting any of that. And that's because I am um, add, adding water more slowly. This is a technique similar to what I do with Mystic Water soaps, which are wonderful performers. OK, 
Okay, so I'll mix that for a little while. Just then add more water when it kind of evens out. If you do get that watery lather, well, number one, you're not following my method this way. That's okay. You might find another method. Um, if you, uh, many, many lathers start with that watery big bubble stuff and the solution is just keep stirring because you haven't yet integrated all the soap that's in the brush yet. Now, on the other hand, if you have overwatered the lather, then you'll definitely get that, of course. And the solution is to uh, go back to the puck and load more soap. Something like that. No matter how much you stir, you'll always get uh, a thin lather. Don't shave with that. Because that's not going to work well for you. See, look at this lather already. I mean, this is terrific. That's great. Okay, we have added uh, two teaspoons now in total to the lather. I forgot what I told you to remind me to talk about. Darn it. Oh, uh, one, a couple of the reasons for austere August um, is to, uh, you know, you're able to pick, uh, some people pick a soap that they really want to learn how to use. Um, and that's what I've done here with Williams. Uh, some other people are picking equipment that they want to learn how to use. A friend of mine has picked a, uh, uh, a badger brush and he's always used synthetics up to this point. So he had his first shave today with his badger brush and he reports that it went really well. So he'll be able to fine tune that and kind of break it in because it's new. And so I'm also breaking in this brush too. If you have a razor, I've got a couple of razors that are really tricky and I haven't spent the time to learn to use them and they were good candidates for this month. But I've been so enjoying the dark. I just wanted to try to get a lot of information out there about this new razor so that people can make big, good decisions about whether it might be a good one for them too. So we have got a big old glob of soap, of lather. Let's do a finger test. We don't want to over lather, over wet the soap. Nice and slick, tiny bit of cushion. Let's go ahead and use it. We'll see how long that one minute load. It's also possible that now this time I did not bloom the soap. That's another variable. Many people say that blooming is not necessary. Many people do bloom soaps. Blooming means putting a little bit of water on top of the soap uh, a few minutes before the shave. Sometime, uh, some soap manufacturers even recommend boiling water on top of the soap. Um, uh, I think uh, Saponificio Veracino is an Italian soap that recommends you do that. It's a very hard soap. Harder than Williams, I think. All right, wet my face. All right. Oh, I didn't even load up my, my blade yet. So, the NASA has been a very good blade for me. Uh, I Pretty sure that I have used it in the dart before, and it did well. Um, so the dart has this uh, old type style where you um, you take it apart. It's in three pieces. This is the top cap on which I push the blade. This is the base plate. This is the pa uh, the machined version of the dart, and uh, as such, it has machining marks there on the underside of the base plate like that and the top is not fully polished be careful as I move my finger along the it's not fully polished because they, they intentionally left the machine marks there because that's the the kind of the rawness of this particular I think it's very attractive uh, that the the brushed aspect of it produces little micro edges I wonder if you can hear Um, it almost sounded like a zipper. It's because there's little micro edges on there from those machine marks. 
It makes holding this thing, gripping it, really easy and secure. All right, blade is there. We have loaded. My face has been wet. Let's lather up. Oh, that feels good. Very soft. The brush is very comfortable. It has been um, pretty quickly within its age. What we're looking for is a nice hydrated lather that doesn't disappear too quickly. Doesn't disappear quickly at all, really. Look at that. I mean, this is as kind of ex as luxurious as about any of the top soaps. Feels great. The smell is at about, I'd say a four out of 10, which is kind of where I like it. It's not super pleasant, but it does take me back. If you are a person on a budget, kind of doing this to help you to see if maybe this uh, can be a, a soap that helps you a dollar and 56 cents a month for uh, for your shaving soap. That might be a great bargain for you. All right, here we go. Uh, the Nasset I chose because it's been a good blade for me, but it hasn't really appeared on the radar in terms of a lot of the uh, blades that have been known to go long distances. And so that's why I'm here to test it out. First pass, I'm going to do my normal, oh, that feels good. No pulling, very smooth. I do barely feel it cutting, but most importantly, I hear it cutting more than I actually feel it cutting. Excellent pairing. I'm not really stretching my skin right now. Because this is the first pass. I'm going to leave a little bit of the hair for the other passes to get. Um, what the person who has made this razor has achieved, at least for people who have my skin and my hair type, my uh, beard type, is kind of a, a variable razor. If I have it at this angle here, it's kind of cutting it at maximum blade exposure. And it's good at doing that with a good blade. But my skin is just sensitive enough to where this maximum exposure is too much if I do it for three passes. But the way this Razor happens to work is that I can bring the tip of the handle in toward my skin more, and it really it puts less pressure on the blade to be on my skin. It relieves a little bit of that pressure, and that's just enough to give me a comfortable shave for the second and third and uh, future passes. All right. That was, uh, I felt very protected, no cuts or irritation. Let's rinse it off. Wasn't a lot of luxurious creaminess right there as I rinsed it off because uh, I don't do a pre-shave routine usually. And so the soap first pass kind of, uh, my oils on my skin tend to diminish the effectiveness of the slickness of that first pass. All right. Here, let's take a look at our lather. Just to kind of show you what we're dealing with to help you understand where I stopped. All right. But obviously, uh, and where did I stop? I stopped at two and a half teaspoons of water.
This does not have a, a lot of uh, kind of body or cushion to it right now. And that may indicate uh, like blooming might be wise. I'm going to have to keep a chart of the different things I try. To uh, be able to get a little bit more soap on the brush. There we go. All right. Now is the time to bring that handle in just a little bit to decrease the handle angle. Which ends up increasing the comfort. Especially in my neck area right here. Multiple passes. I'm not really stretching my skin very much. Just kind of preventing it from moving in big ways. And no, I don't intend to record the same video every day for the entire month of August. Something I was that hit me right before the shave was that maybe I would pause the video during the actual shaving part unless I thought of, you know, something that might be helpful for you. Um, and so then I would have shorter videos that would have more uh, helpful content. Very comfortable. With the more closed angle, I'm just no irritation at all. Um, I can't shave with the Blackland. Uh, it's difficult for me to shave that without getting irritation. Uh, the Blackland uh, Blackbird. That one's a much uh, a little bit more aggressive. I have to be very careful with that one. That's probably a little bit out of my comfort zone. Whereas this comes just right at my comfort zone and the uh, of aggression and the technique that I've established helps me to stay within my comfort zone with no irritation. So I'm very happy about that. Now rinse. And there with the rinsing of the second pass I get my creaminess and I get the nice slick feel of the soap my oils the oils of my skin were removed from the with the first pass all right looks like we're gonna have plenty of lather to do the job so in terms of lather quantity it looks like um, the minute load is is no problem but I think what we need to do is change the ratio a little bit Maybe not quite put in so much water. I let my uh, face come to this pass a little too wet. So my uh, lather here is thinning out. So what I'm going to do is just kind of keep working it. Let a little bit of that water evaporate. And the uh, lather will get creamier and all that stuff. Didn't really do a scrub pass, um, a scrub portion of this pass, and that's normal for the third pass. Uh, feels good. Feels a little, a little tingly. All right. Just going to do with the grain now because my cheeks usually get trimmed up nicely. Keeping my angle. Did I sweep up a, a hair or something right there? If I make a pass, uh, a stroke where I don't cut anything, 
I can just raise my handle up just a little bit until I hear cutting. I'm down in my neck here. I need not to be careless. Keep that handle kind of in until I feel out the situation. Now I got to remember to go from here up for this is my trouble spot here. Being very careful with my pressure. A lot of people say no pressure, but you, you have to put a little pressure. You just have to. This was a very tricky place to shave, and I believe it was because I didn't know that the actual hair uh, direction here had maybe changed or there's a little mini swirl right here. Once I started coming at it from the outside and coming in, turn a little bit, coming from the outside and coming in that way, uh, then it became a, a piece of cake. And that's kind of one of the pieces that we talk about when we say when your technique gets better. Many times blades will work for you when they used to not when your technique gets better. So yeah, this ratio was a little on the thin side. So I think uh, what I might do in the future is not take it this far in terms of the hydration. And that's cool because now I know Two and a half is where I landed. So one minute of uh, uh, one minute of loading, and then uh, two and a half is the current. So let's back it off to maybe two and a quarter or two next time for the same amount of loading. See what we get. So it's a comfortable shave. I did feel the blade sometimes, uh, but on that first pass, mmm. That was good. I, I didn't really feel the blade on that first pass. Very nice. I watched my angles on the second and third. All right. Uh, did I even do a third pass? Yeah. Yeah, I must have. Yep, I did. Okay. Um, I'm going to pause you and take a look at everything. It's a great shave. That is a... Uh, I think I see a few tips, uh, and when I say a tip, I mean just the very point, the dot of the hair. Uh, I think I see a few dots, maybe one hair where I see any length on it. That's just, that is above average for me, and that is usually when I do achieve that, it's after another pass on my neck, so it's very much above average for me when, uh, uh, and it's just three passes. Just three. Oh, another thing I mentioned earlier, and I think I meant to say, is that uh, uh, with the blade, some wisdom I gained from another shaver who had taken several blades to very long lengths, 60, 90, 120, 150. Um, uh, he said that... Uh, you have to learn that uh, in the in the early times, your blade's going to be extra sharp. Like right now, we're in the third use. This is its prime sharpest time. And probably at some point, it's going to switch. Get a little bit, excuse me. Get a little bit more dull, but still plenty sharp to shave. Okay, so that's a point to watch out for. And just because... It has changed a little bit doesn't mean it needs to be pitched if you're going to go the marathon route. Um, and, and you can just keep going with it. He even said one time he would get a shave that wasn't very good. It wouldn't be tugging or anything like that, maybe. But in a couple, he'd have a couple of bad shaves like that. Not bad shaves, but just not as good. Um, and then the next day, the next shave, it would bounce back. 
And so that's very interesting, kind of counterproductive to what I might assume. And he said that it was probably because that that day or those two days, his his angles just weren't weren't on point. Um, another thing he said was that uh, his belief was that an aggressive razor might be better to make a blade go longer than a uh, a moderate um, a, uh, a mild razor. So. For what it's worth, let's just see what happens. I've been delaying just a little bit because I want to be able to tell you about the face feel. Been a few minutes now. Um, soaps like Williams are uh, maybe one of the things that people also don't like is that it doesn't have all these oils and things that uh, help your face to feel good after a shave. I might argue it doesn't matter because this is cheap. And a good balm is usually a great idea for your skin anyway, even if you have a soap that helps your skin out with lots of oils and butters and things, right? And so this can make up for quite a lot. And that's my opinion. Um, and that's, that goes for other, um, you know, balms as well, lotions and balms and things like that. And this stuff is cheap. It's like five fifty or something at Walmart. And a little bit more at the drugstores, but it's available many, many, many places. It's on Amazon for about the same price if you buy three at a time. Uh, all right, so there we go. Um, I have gone probably a few minutes now. Um, I'm going to let myself clean up now before putting on any post-shave product because I want to describe to you the post-shave feel without adding anything yet. I'm still cleaning up, but I wanted to mention the blade care that I'm going to do between each use. Um, I would recommend, based on other people's experience, that you just keep the um, blade in the razor locked in um, and just uh, give it a good rinse after each shave. Shake it. Now, I believe in this case, the uh, maker of these razors says to prevent staining to, uh, it may even say remove the blade. Um, between each use, but check on blacklandrazors.com uh, for his uh, information about that. But I know that he says maybe open it up just a hair so that you get a little ventilation and that will help prevent staining um, on this type of material. Uh, this is a stainless steel razor if I didn't uh, uh, mention it earlier. Um, and the nice thing about these guys is that uh, um, if you drop them in the shower or in, uh, in the sink, or when you're traveling, they're much less likely to break. Um, the Parkers, the Mercours, the Edwin Jaggers um, are great razors in, in certain respects, but they're made out of a pop metal or Zamac. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And this joint right here, where you have the bolt that goes into the handle, that's the weakness. And if it lands on the corner right here, in many cases, those uh, pop metal type razors, even though they're coated in something nice like chrome, uh, they can break easily because the metal is just not strong. If you never break them, they can last a lifetime. Okay, so just you can make your choice about which one you go with. There's nothing wrong with either one as long as you understand uh, what you're going to be facing. Uh, this one, razors like this, can be passed down to your grandchildren. It's and farther. Uh, what I came in to say was that what I'm going to do with the blade, what I'm going to do, don't necessarily advise you to do, uh, I, I'm going to take it out each time, carefully, very carefully, don't touch the edge. Um, obviously, I don't want to get cut, but I don't want anything to damage the edge because that's going to hurt its longevity. I'm going to place it gently on the on a towel, and then I'm going to gently lay another part of the towel over it and just dab the water away, and that's all. Because I don't want micro rust, micro water to be on the blade edge to promote that. And no, I have no basis for any of that. That's just what I'm going to do. So it's a little warm in here. It's probably been 10 minutes past the time when I um, stopped shaving or rinsed the, water, the soap away. And I'm experiencing no dryness or uh, any of that. Uh, that factor where you, your face kind of shrinks and it feels weird. Uh, but I'm also sweating a little bit. It's a little warm where I am right now. The thermostat set a little 
a little too high for me and my, I'm a huge dude. Um, I'm going to say about 90 to 95 percent baby butt smooth on the cheeks which is very good for me. That's without going against the grain. Uh, so Part of the way my, my skin may feel not dry because I am perspiring just a little bit and that water is kind of helping to make me, I'm just trying to give you the facts, but I'm not feeling any of that, you know, dryness. Uh, we'll wait till I get home and I'll have my own air conditioned settings and it may be different. So let's take this after. Don't know how much it'll take, but that's how much I'm going to use right there. Kind of a gel going on smoothly. I think it has a little alcohol in it. Let's see. That's good because that'll kind of help me to keep in touch. Yep, alcohol. Uh, I don't know if this particular brand has a uh, bad ingredients. I don't really know what the bad ingredients are. Okay, good news is I don't see any menthol. I'm really glad because I don't like menthol. And I didn't want to have to be using a menthol uh, product every day. It just kind of irritates my skin instead of providing me with a cooling effect. All right, well, that was about the right amount. A little extra on my hands. This one, unfortunately, smells a little too girly for me. I wish I would have picked the original instead of the fresh. And the floral component's just a little too high for me, but fortunately, um, I did a little test with it earlier today, and it did dissipate fairly quickly, so I'm going to depend on that. So we'll be evaluating it, not really for the scent, but uh, just for the effectiveness and the hydration qualities that it has. All right, I'm going to pause you while I keep cleaning it up. So I think I forgot to introduce the brush. Uh, I think I told you it was a boar knot, but this is a boar from Whipped Dog, Whipped Dog, and WhippedDog.com is the address there. Um, he has only one type of boar knot. This seems to have uh, a good bit of uh, nice splay, not a lot of backbone, kind of where I like it, so far at least. Um, the handle, I glued it in with silicone to a, uh, a handle from Shave Forge that I got off eBay. It's uh, pretty enough. It's got some... Uh, green and red stuff in the midst of the purple. I kind of don't like that too much, but love the comfort. I've got big hands. Um, it's nice and long, and uh, I mean, I've, I've been really enjoying this type, and it's an inexpensive handle. Sometimes handles cost, a custom one can cost you 60 to $80 and more, um, but, a, uh, but one like this where they just mixed a batch of resin and turned it, um, maybe even a machine did it all. I don't know. I don't really care. It's comfortable and it's in a good price point. So that, it'll be fun watching that brush brush grow as we move along. All right. Uh, Boar brushes tend to uh, change a lot over time. Usually, sometimes it takes uh, six to nine months to get to their full, um, the bloom, uh, the tips being all split like they should be. Uh, it can take a while. And so the brush you start out with the first 15 shaves um, is usually not the brush you end up with. And so that's something you can think about. If you have a, a bore and you're within 10 shaves or so, and it's maybe too floppy for you or something like that, it's not usually the case, but then you may not want to use up too much time maturing it because it's going to get more floppy and more open and more aerated. Um, if the density is a problem for you, if it's not dense enough, it's only going to get a little bit less dense as it keeps splaying and opening. But if it's a little too uh, stiff for you in the beginning, then it might be perfect because it'll move into a better place and then stay there for a very long time. All right, well, there you go. Um, that is my experience. I'm very happy with the shave. I can't wait to thin, uh, to thicken up the mixture just a little bit, get a little bit more luxury. Uh, but a, uh, this mix right here might be one a straight razor 
shaver might enjoy because they usually like them just a little bit more, a little bit thinned out to, ma to maximize that slickness. So uh, very happy, um, no irritation, no drying of my face. It's still kind of hydrated, uh, feeling good. It looks like the aft is working just fine. So, uh, and I know I don't smell it a whole lot, even after just a few minutes. So I'm happy about that. And, uh, and we're good. Now I've got to hurry up and get my entry in before midnight. So I better go take care. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves, uh, trying to help everybody out and learn more about Williams. I hope there was something here for you. Take care. Good night.